Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On Genoa Hospital today, Wednesday, October 18, 2023, Portia and Curtis establish a relationship, Joss and Carly discover what happened to Ava, Christina and Blaze become friends, and Dante is placed on administrative leave. As Porter knocks on Curtis' door and inquires about his desire for company, Curtis slides into bed. She follows his instructions to sit down and does so. They discuss the dinner, and Portia considers throwing a huge celebration for Trina's graduation at the Savoy. She believes it is never too early to start planning, despite the fact that that is two years from now. Curtis has to get used to watching from the sidelines because he knows he won't be able to dance with his daughter at her birthday. He stymies Portia's attempts to console him. He claims he can't love her the way he once could. He claims he's just not ready, despite Portia still believing they can have a physical connection. She believes that as long as they proceed gently, they will succeed. Although Curtis is aware that the physicians cleared him for sex, he is not mentally prepared to make love to her. She is confident that he will be ready in due course, and they will overcome this together. Even if they never again share a bed like they used to, Portia vows she won't give up on him and she won't leave him. He claims to hear her, which is a lot to tolerate. She adamantly maintains that she isn't putting up with anything, that she loves him, and that his opening up has brought them even closer together. She claims he's letting her in, which is a good beginning. They kiss and declare their love for one another. Tracy is charged with extorting Lois Kidd in the Quartermain's kitchen, according to Lois. Blackmail is a powerful word, according to Tracy. Tracy is informed by Lois that she abused Brooke Lynn and now has to answer to her. Tracy claims that Brooke Lynn got into difficulty and that in exchange for a favor, she helped her out of it. Tracy is criticized by Lois for extorting her daughter which is not a favor. Tracy claims that everything turned out how Tracy and Brooke Lynn had hoped it would. Tracy is questioned by Lois about what this is for, night cream. She charges Tracy with pursuing deception in order to sate her own breed. Tracy corrects her, stating that Brooke Lynn is the reason she obtained the business. She claims that when she tried to officially purchase it, Lucy wouldn't budge, so she had to obtain it in another way and give it to Brooke Lynn. Tracy doesn't want Brooke Lynn to spend her life on music and have nothing to show for it like Lois did since Lois isn't believing this story. Tracy claims that Lucy would have left Brooke Lynn as a glorified assistant, but now that she owns 51% of the business, she also receives her 1% of ELQ back. Brooke Lynn won't be interested in owning any stock in this business, claims Lois. They'll see, Tracy promises. Lois respects her daughter and will not compromise her integrity for a corporation that was obtained through blackmail. Tracy informs Lois that she already has, and that Lois must accept the possibility that BLQ resembles her more than she would like. Ava is brought to Carly's house by Dex and Dante, where Joss and Carly are waiting. When Carly sees Ava, she is taken aback. If Avery is present, does she seem okay? asks Ava. According to Joss, Avery is sound asleep. Carly inquires as to what is going on as Ava ascends to check on her. Mason Gatlin kidnapped Ava, according to Dante. Dex and Dante inform Carly and Joss of how they found Mason and Ava, and the events on the cliff, as well as how they found them. Joss envelops Dex after becoming afraid that he might have perished. Later, Dant departs, and Ava comes back to see how Avery is doing. Ava is given the assurance by Joss that Avery is unaware of what happened tonight. She is informed by Carly that Sonny has added guards and the estate is secure. Ava is welcome to stay the night, but Carly needs to return to the hospital. Thank you, Ava. Ava expresses her gratitude to Joss and Dex after receiving her phone back from Joss. Ava is asked by Dex if she heard Mason disclose the name of his boss, but she didn't. Mason allegedly received a call, snapped out of it, and hauled her outside before he arrived. Austin finds out at the hospital that Mason has been admitted with two gunshot wounds. 
Austin informs Nurse Dion that this is his relative, necessitating the involvement of a different medical professional. Mason awakens when Austin cries out to him as she leaves to locate another physician. Where is Ava? Austin queries. The doctor examines Mason later and informs him that he is fortunate that the bullets missed his spine. Austin inquires once again about Ava's whereabouts while they are alone. Mason acknowledges his ignorance. Mason can only recall Ava yelling when he was shot. Mason is told to go up to the oar when the other doctor comes back. Jordan enters the scene just as Dante is going to enter Mason's room and warns him not to. She instructs him to return home because his situation has changed. She is reminded by Dante that she is no longer the commissioner. Jordan claims that Mac phoned her because the Potok Police Department is upset with him for showing up in their territory and taking matters into his own hands. She claims that this will pass after the inquiry clears him. He requests an inquiry. She tells him that this is typical practice because he shot a civilian. She tells him to go home because he's on administrative leave and can't be here. When Austin comes into Jordan, he inquires of her about the status of his cousins and Eva's relationship. She gives him the details, and he then picks up a phone to call Ava. She disregards his ring. Jordan later queries Austin about Mason's kidnapping of Ava. He maintains he doesn't know and that his cousin has always been unpredictable. Sam pays a visit to Drew and brings a present from Scout. She received it as the year's top swimmer. Sam claims Scout won it for him, and he is so proud of her. It will be hung in his office, he says. When Carly gets to the hospital, she spots Sam and Drew. Following Sam's departure, she calls Sonny to update him before going inside to check on Drew. Ava continues to reject calls from Austin at Carly's house. She then clears off all of her alerts. Joss questions Dex outside about how close he came to falling off the cliff. He claims that Mason was challenging to defeat, and that if Dante hadn't arrived, he would have crossed the border. She sent Dante after him, and he owes her his life for that. They then kiss. When Dante gets home, he discovers Sam reading in bed asleep. She is awakened when he removes her spectacles. She claims she made an effort to stay awake, but he assures her that it's okay, and that he is also eager to put the day behind him. He tells her about being put on leave after shooting a person who might not survive. As he gets into bed with her, he claims that Carly is calling Sonny to let him know what happened. Sonny and Nina sleep together on the island. She enjoys seeing his joyful expression, which is so relaxed given how worried he has been lately. Sonny claims that a scenario has been ongoing for far too long, but he plans to put an end to it when he gets home. Sonny is asked by Nina to leave the Port Charles situation alone and focus on being with her right now. They embrace. They are interrupted by Carly's phone, who tells Sonny that Cyrus Renault has been released from prison and that Mason kidnapped Ava. Sonny snaps, announcing that he'll fly home the next day. Of course, it was him all along, he says as he gets out of bed. Nina is perplexed. While enjoying some time together under the stars, Christina still struggles to accept her current situation. Blaze claims to be the new face of deception, so they celebrate her with margaritas. Blaze responds yes and Christina asks if she's always wanted to perform on stage. But as she becomes more well-known, dating and leading a normal life grow harder. She is aware that she comes across as whining, but Christina claims that she actually sounds like a lady who is attempting to decide how much she is willing to give up in order to achieve her objectives. If Christina hadn't recognized her, they would never have met, according to Blaze, who lists this as a benefit of being famous. When Sonny shows there, Christina introduces Blaze to Sonny. His grandson Rocco loves her, therefore he is aware of this. Blaze congratulates him on his marriage and expresses his gratitude. If her dad would like a drink, Christina inquires. He declines, saying that due to a change in plans, he must travel home tomorrow to attend to urgent business. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.